Hey everyone, welcome back to the stream, welcome back to my channel, welcome back to another video. Yes. So, right off the bat, let's just get started. Obviously back here again for part two, working on this guy right there. Yeah, that's the F-15K Slam Eagle 148 scale ROKAF and Yonaseyo Yarobun. Yes. So, what are we doing? Well, last time we kind of went over unboxing it a little bit and going over through the the extra detail stuff that I'm putting into it and. Uh, including resin ejection seats, which I have painted all up now and they are all finished and ready to go in, as well as resin exhaust nozzles and actually the whole resin engine parts. Those are all painted. I've got the two parts assembled. It's gonna be a little bit hard to see in there. Another plane, yes, you Ella, that's right. So let's change our camera, see if you can actually see inside there you can see the nice golden bits otherwise it's all black um, it's not really focusing but let's see here here we go yeah so that's pretty much it got two of those all done yeah so those are the engines um, I've been working a little bit as you can tell I've been working a little bit here on the cockpit uh, panels. This happens to be the the Wizzo. If it will focus for me, there we go. That's his panel. And we have the pilots. It's not quite complete. I still have to put a bezel around in the middle there. Okay, so that's that one. So I got a bezel I need to put around there and I have put on basically one half of the, the panels for the sides, including a couple of styrene pieces for the throttle and the joystick control on the Wizzos on his uh, left side there. So yeah, that's where we're at. I did glue this on to the um, the front landing gear bay just because I found where it's connected here um, on each side was extremely delicate and it was wanting to flop around and eventually break so I decided let's just glue this now and that's now I've got a solid piece to work with and it's not so fragile um, I wanted to show you guys I forgot to mention this last time I didn't get to the clear parts um, in this kit and this is the one thing I find is disappointing and um, that is the fact that there is a very ugly pronounced seam line going all the way through across here you can feel it as well as see it the great big seam line going all the way across on both canopy pieces you should be the camera should pick it up right there you can see that angle going all the way through there all the way through it's really nasty and on this piece too right in the middle there it's just awful I don't know why these companies can make some canopies without them and some without they're, why don't they just do the same mold process for everyone and do it the same? Um, I really don't understand why they decide to change them up sometimes like this. And then you got to deal with this ugly seam going all the way through there. And because uh, it's not even like, oh, it's the Academy kits. They all do the same. It's all terrible. Or the Tamiya is always perfect. It's not true. Um, Tamiya F14, no seam line in the canopy. F15, the, if you get the 48 scale F15, no seam line. 
the 132nd scale F15, ugly seam line. Why? Why? Uh, the, but the 132nd scale F4, no seam line. So it's not because it's 132nd scale. So what the heck, right? I don't get it. So I'm going to have to deal with that, get out my putty and my razor file first to clean that up and smooth that down, get my putty out, my polishing compound and all that and have to deal with all that. So that's just an extra thing. I want to show you guys, That's if you're going to get this kit, that's what you're going to have to deal with. Okay, but let's, uh, let's work on our interior here, our cockpit, and uh, start working on this and get it actually assembled. So I need to put this little bezel on this guy first. So let's get working on that. I did find that some of these parts have adhesive on the back and some of them don't. So when it came to this, this is actually two layers. The first layer is just black with a few little things and it had an adhesive so it just stuck down to the plastic no problem. But the layer that you put on top that actually has all the different gauges on it um, it wasn't sticky at all. I had to use uh, CA glue. So that's something to keep in mind. I have yet to find any of these things. None of these pieces have adhesive on them. So I'm gluing them down. I'm going to put that there just for ease of grabbing it. Now it has to go right in the middle on this one. I've already put the one here and I've put the one here. I don't know if you can see that very well because it's so small, but that's where we're at, okay? So, make sure I have this oriented correctly. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of glue I like to glue at least three sides of these so that there's no chance of it coming off. And then I want to have it the right way around. Unfortunately, with this glue, the way being the way it is, I do have a few moments to line it up. And that's going to be pretty well good enough, just like that. So I'll leave that. Oops. <laughs> and that'll be fine. And that concludes that. So I'm going to take these two panels and I'll put them in the cockpit. Okay. Now the other two panels do have adhesive on them. And what that kind of does for taking them off of this, it makes it a little bit difficult because even though you've cut the little bars to break them loose, they don't just pop off. So it makes it a little hard to tell whether you actually have dislocated them from the sprue properly. And I just kind of glide my knife underneath like that. And now that's broken loose. It is sticky on the bottom. This one goes in the wizzos. Just line it up right at the back and just kind of drop it down. Just like that. That's in place, give it a little bit of pressure to squeeze it down and that should be all you need to do. I already put the other little joystick controller on there for this side, so there we go. Just like that. That's one. Ah, 
see this is where you think you did it but you didn't so it's still connected here let's try this again there we go okay you know, so I'm taking care to just only touch the sides, and I still got my finger stuck down it. I'm trying my best to not touch the underneath. And there we go. And now, I would say the detrimental thing to this is they're not very 3D. That's where I believe the Red Fox Studios um, do a better job at this. At these things is there's a very very three-dimensional of course those are resin they're not photo etched like this stuff is now the rest of these pieces here these are going to be going on the actual insides of the fuselage as noted on the other side of the instructions a couple little pieces that go on the sides of the fuselage so as far as this goes we're temporarily finished okay so I am going to put these and I'm going to trade them out over here as we wait. We are going to move on and actually start a little bit of some assembly here. I'm going to wait. I'm not actually going to put the seats in yet. I'm going to determine how well the plane will sit on its top. Okay. One thing I don't like doing is putting the cockpit, putting this pilot seats in the plane um, when I'm doing a lot of assembly and painting and stuff because you wind up having to set the thing down on its top and I don't like it resting on the top of the seat, um, which is also why I don't put the front canopy piece on very early because I don't like it sitting on top of that. Um, so that's another thing. So that's why I kind of wait. I don't want to put the, if I can avoid it, I'm not going to put the seats in yet, right? And so that's why they're just kind of still sitting here and they're still on their little sticks. And so that's that, right? So I just wanted to explain that a little bit. Okay, here's uh, my two seats. I didn't give you guys a good close up view of them. Um, that's them there. Um, yeah, all painted up nice. So there you go. That's them, okay? I'll just put these guys over here for now so they're nice and out of the way and they're not going to get hurt. Okay, so we need to take uh, J19. So where's our J tree? That's right here. I also have the little um, pulled pulls in that go in the center of the seats. So I need to put those on. Not forget about those. Uh, J19 are the pedals. Ah, uh, okay. So we don't really need to worry about the pedals because the pedals are already on here. They're on both of these. So I don't need to put them in. They would go right here. But because they're on this, when I put this in, the pedals are already sitting back a little bit. And they're not so far ahead that you wouldn't be able to see them. It's almost a little too, too far back if you think about it. But yeah, so yeah. But before I put that in, I wanna put the main joystick in. K20. Oh, we got two of them, front and back. Okay, so that tells me there's going to be one on each tree because we got two two K trees, right? So where is 20? It's a lot going on on this particular sprue. Seventeen eighteen twenty right there, almost in the middle. There's one. Let's 
you know, as a kid building airplanes, you know how many times I would accidentally break the joystick? I'd wind up either not being able to use it or it would just be a tiny little stump. Um, yeah, I think these things are black from the box up and then gray from on the way down. I'm going to reference really quickly. Um, I want to take a look at a cockpit of an F-15 real quick here just to uh, have a look. And it's actually gray all the way down. So there we go. Okay. So the only part that's actually gray or that's actually black is the joystick the actual like grip the hand grip the rest of it's all gray so that's perfect that means I can put it in there and I can paint it later and I like putting this in before the instrumentation because once you've got the instrumentation in there, it's a little bit tricky in getting your hands in there, even just as it is now. There's one. And two. There we go. And now we can put our instrumentation in. I've already test fit this a couple of times, so I already know where I need to glue. Obviously down on the bottom here, and then a couple of little dabs on the top should do it. is in just like that okay and now we'll do the pilot You know, once you put glue on it, suddenly it becomes a pain. But there we go. And the pilot's in. Now there's both. All right. So with those done, looks like that completes our cockpit. Other than a couple of decals they want me to put on the sides of the seats, that's fine. There's no problem with that. Um, that's kind of par for the course. A little bit of details, right? Um, and that's it. So, we actually have a piece here. D26, which they show a reference here. G20, we, we're actually going to be doing D26, but what, where does that go? They don't show it, 
on here where it's supposed to go. Does that go on the top here? Does it go back here? Uh, they show it referencing going down. It actually does. It goes right in the middle here. So let's find D26. Where's my D? This is J. That's not my D. Here's my D. This big guy here, 26. So this, there's a couple of little pins, so in theory this is going to line up right here. Uh, just like that. That's how it's going to sit. Okay, that works for me. I don't know how visible this is going to be on the side. Hi there, how are you? <laughs> Sorry for your name. What's your name? Elpo one Judd? <laughs> it's okay. It is an interesting name. Okay. <laughs> Happy Easter. I speak Spanish. Sorry for my English. Well, that's okay. That's no problem at all. Sorry, I don't speak any Spanish myself. So we have that. That's now on there. And so that covers up the uh, instrumentation on the Wizzos. There we go. Okay. So I guess that now completes the cockpit. So the next step, next step here, I just want to check something here. There we go. Looks like we're going to be start working on the intake and uh, working on those. Unfortunately, it looks like they're doing the two halves coming together. That always creates a seam line for the two, and that's always something you have to deal with. And unfortunately, that's what we're going to be dealing with. So it looks like we've got two options here. Uh, Joa is left and U is right. Oh, sorry, Choa. Choa is left. But, okay, so we've got two options. Um, if you get anybody who knows about the F-15, they know their intake things will sit like this and they can actually point them down like this and they move up and down. Um, whereas a lot of other planes, they actually have intake um, they have holes in the top of the fuselage for extra air to flow out. The F-15s, they just tilt them down and air can escape out the top. Um, so we have options whether we're going to have them positioned up or down. If I could easily grab my 132nd scale version, I could show you them in action. 
and show you the difference, but I can't. So um, we're going to go with option A on this one, uh, this guy here. So we got to grab our C tree and our B tree. C and B. Let's see here. Let's find them. There we go. It's kind of funny. I don't know if, if this is B or not. Oh, this is C. Sorry. So we want C. C6 and 7, we want all four of these. Okay. By the way, I'm using the translator for this word. Okay, well that's cool. Alright, so there's that. And then we're going to need these pieces. We want B13, 12 and 13. 12 and 13 are right here. Are you putting together a yet? It's a jet, yes. It's the, uh, it's the F-15. F-15K. Um, also known as a Slam Eagle. Uh, that's this picture right here. This right there. That's what I'm building. So I'll show you the difference here. There's this particular version for the nozzle facing down. Um, there you go. There's a difference right there. This is straight and this is angled down. And that's the difference. So you get two different options on your build, whatever you want to do. Okay. Just like that. We're going to go with this one. So this can be put over here. It relaxes me to see you put this together. <laughs> well, that's good. Okay, so we need to clean up these nub marks here. So that this will fit together nicely. And this is what I'm talking about. This seam line is going to have to go away. It's going to be a challenge in getting rid of it. But it's the way it is. So, these are going to go together. It's unfortunate they don't even have any guide pins or anything here. It's just put it together. There's no guide pins at all. That is awful. Just a, a hope and a prayer holds this thing together. One day I hope to see you with 6,000 viewers doing what you like. Well, thank you very much. Um, it would be cool to have that many viewers also. <laughs> I think so. At this point, I'd be happy with 10 viewers. <laughs> I want to get this as straight as I can before I try and glue it on here. Basically just lining it up at the front and then leaving it. Also I don't like that seam line there that it's going to leave. So there's going to be quite a bit of filling on this little guy as time goes on. So 
So basically, let's run a bead glue along here. And grab this one. And do that. I'm actually in Canada. My shirt. <laughs> Canada. <laughs> yeah, I'm Canadian. That's okay, no need to apologize. It's usually safe to assume somewhere in the United States. Okay, so this is on here now. I have it lined up here, but it doesn't quite line up at the front. We've got a little tiny po point sticking out. This is really a bad... This is just awful. This is not a good way to do the intakes. And unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about it. So I already, I'm anticipating some alignment problems. Could probably, yeah, it's not gonna be perfect. But, it is what it is. That just means lots of putty, lots of filling, some sanding. I think there's some flashing on the inside of this, at least, there we go. Next, the truth is he doesn't notice it because of your accent. <laughs> oh, oh, my, uh, I don't have a Canadian accent. <laughs> I've been told by my uh, Korean friends that my English is very easy to understand compared to a lot of people. Which is flattering. Okay, let's put a bead of glue along here. Grab the one that goes on that side. So I think the problem with the way they've designed this is it leaves a lot for misalignment. A lot of potential for misalignment on it. could have done better. They could have done a lot better on this. Okay, so I have to let that sit. Now 
now that I got that kind of flush, which means 90 degrees. And we're kind of lined up here and here, so there we go. Okay, so that's those. Set those down, let that let them set. Okay. Now we got the fuselage. Inside of our fuselage, okay. Um, which means we need B B3 and B4. How old are you? I have 11. Well, I am 51. <laughs> it's hard for me to admit that for a moment there. It's a little bit difficult to admit. I'm actually 51. Okay, so where I'm cutting off here and here, I'm leaving some extra to allow for cleanup of the sprue marks cleanly. A lot of these kits will come with a nose that's all one piece and then put you put the nose on like that so you don't have this big seam line going all the way down. Um, this kit, unfortunately, we don't have that luxury. So we got a seam line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wow is right. using different nippers all of a sudden instead of these ones well these ones are much sharper and so they actually are cutting this the plastic rather than just squeezing it to until it breaks and so that's the main reason why I have suddenly changed nippers and cleaning this up because I want as clean break as I can do you like to do that because I love to see you do that <laughs> Yes, I enjoy it very much. Okay, now to clean this off, I'm going to use my razor file. Again, this is not just for Gundams. I love this thing. Okay, this cleans up any plastic flawlessly and even will polish the plastic if you want it to. See how it's just burning that off of there? Getting rid of that little nub. Yes, it's creating a couple little scratches, but this thing's gonna be painted anyway, so a few little scratches don't matter. But I'm getting rid of that nub, and that's what's the important thing. I don't want that visible, okay? I gotta do that with this one on top too. Unfortunately, I am going to wind up having to put putty along there and clean up that seam line once we get this all buttoned to, together. And uh, that's going to be a lot of work. But if I do everything right, I should wind up with a very nice looking uh, section that you can't see these seam lines. Unfortunately, that's the way it is with seam lines. Sometimes they're just there, and you, even though you don't want them. So there we go. We've got a very nice looking, smooth section there. Unfortunately, we are going to have to deal with... The seam line is nice and crisp. It's, it's pretty good, it, but I'm going to have to deal with that. I don't want any lines there. And the bottom, although not quite as important, I still want to try and get rid of it. They haven't done a very good job on the actual nose on the tip. It's uh, one side's a little bit broken and the other isn't. So that kind of sucks. Maybe a little bit of putty can fix that. Do a little bit of sculpting. We'll see. So, they want me to paint the inside. Probably black, 
I'm just going to double check my color chart. Flat black, yeah. So they want the inside black. So I can use this stuff right here. Mr. Surfacer 1500. I'll just give that a quick coat. Quick little spray. second to dry we want J29 but we have our pieces that we have to put on the inside first from our little kit here right we have our kit our little sections that are gonna go inside here and they have them listed uh, let's see this one is gonna go near the back at the top here and then we have other pieces for this side that are going to go here and here. And they actually measure 21 millimeters and blah, blah, blah. So let's take a look. We want number seven. That's this guy here. Find out real quickly here if he's sticky or if I'm going to be gluing him. Is sticky okay so he's supposed to go right here in from the back. Let's get our next one here. Twenty one millimeters. Ten twenty one. Okay, so that's those. So, we'll grab the other side. And we need to take number 23. It's this guy here. That. 
go. And we want number 19. 19 is this guy here. This one is not sticky. Okay, it's not sticky, so I'm gonna have to glue them on. So I'm just gonna dip the tip here in my glue. So he's gonna go right up in here. Just like that. And we don't do another one on the other side. Not sure why, but that's what it goes. Okay. We have this last piece here that's going to go in, but they're showing it after putting the cockpit in the fuselage. And that's this guy here. So for now, Put them aside. Move these out of the way. We need J29. Off of our J tree. They also want to be painted black. And I'm curious, do they want me to put these together before putting the cockpit in? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So these go together first. this and then we're going to slide our cockpit in <laughs> we're going to slide our cockpit in like this it's kind of a hokey way to do it why not just glue it in where you need it. I like this idea better because you can get it where you need it to be first. Although their alignment on here is not very good at all. But at least you get it to where you need it, rather than trying to slide it in there later. So I'm going to put some glue on that edge and in there, and put it in there and there. Yeah, that's what we're doing. We're going to glue it in. Let's glue the cockpit in first. Glue it here. Here, definitely on there. And along here.
that's a better way to do it, I believe. Because now it's going to stay. Now it's going to stay put. I got to put my panel back on because it came off due to an imperfection over here. So should help. Okay, so we're going to glue this together. And help cement the cockpit in. At this point, having glue squeeze out from everywhere is not a problem because at this point I don't really care. I just want it all to line up. So I can always wipe glue away if I get some extra. See it's not really happy at the back there. So don't like that gap. I'm going to have to squeeze that together. So, tape time. Might have to do try the rubber band trick. Let's see if this will work. kind of funny, I don't remember where I got these rubber bands from, but once in a while they're useful. Once in a while. Okay, it seems to be holding it together nice and tight. We'll see. See, the alignment for the landing gear, it doesn't look very good. It doesn't look very good at all, actually. But at the same time, there's nothing really I can do about it. It's 
so it's just a matter of, you know, throw glue at it and hope it sticks. You know what I mean? It's really all we can do. Hopefully that sticks. I don't like that it's not lined up. It's actually not together. My rubber band got some glue on it and deteriorated to the point it's going to break apart. <laughs> but it is what it is. Hold it together with my fingers for now, and that's the way we're going to do. Hopefully that holds. I mean, I could put a clamp on it. I don't know if my little guy, little clamps are going to hold it or not. With it being rounded and everything, it's probably they'll just slip off. Leave it like that. So that can hold like that. <laughs> okay, so we have this piece that needs to go on the top, but obviously I can't do that right now. So let's flip our page because this is done. Flip our page over. They want me to assemble the main landing gear. Or the forward landing gear. We're not going to do that right now. Instead, we're going to put our intake halves together. Okay. Um, so let's do that. We need D14 and D12, and they would need to have them painted white on the inside. Okay. So let's find those pieces. That's these guys here. Okay. They need to be painted white. Uh, kind of standard intake color on American aircraft. There's some nasty looking ejector pin marks, which Normally I would say, hey, those are disgusting. It's going to determine which way is up. So they sit up like this. So the only ones you're really going to see are these front ones. These here and here. And they're pretty significant. So I want to clean them up. Fortunately, <laughs> I've got the room to do this. That looks much better. Okay, that looks a lot better, but because it's a file, it's, it makes it look like crap. So, I want to, I'm going to try something a little different here. I wouldn't normally do this, but... Try using the file to sand. <laughs> Seems.
seems to work pretty good. I do have small sanding sticks, I just remembered that I have them. pretty good. It's actually not bad at all. So how's the top of this look? These pin marks are actually indented and not sticking out. Not that I'm really going to see them, but this one is a possibility of being seen just because it's huge. I don't normally care about the ejector pins on the inside of the intakes because you don't normally see them. But these are really grossly huge. And just obnoxiously big. So I might as well at least get them flattened out. Because it's just terribly noticeable. And I'd rather not have these really ugly marks in there. Okay, so that's better. I'm happy with that. Okay, so I gotta paint them white. So, white. Good old flat white will do the trick. this one first because I'm going to do two coats. Okay, there, we got one coat on there. So now we'll do this one. to dry. That's alright. Let's have a look at these. See, I'm definitely going to have to put some putty in here. That it looks awful, just to say the least. It looks so bad. I'm going to worry about that when I actually put this on the plane, though, because right now I can't even tell. It doesn't even look like it's up 90 degrees, like it's supposed to be it doesn't look lined up there that's a little bit of movement and that moved it that made it better this one we got flashing on the inside here it's just all around a terrible seam I mean you, you can see it here when you look down the intake you're gonna see this you're gonna see this in here when you look down the intake just all around they did a terrible job at this it would have been better had they made one and just done a, a seam line here on the inside where you're not really going to see it. Um, you know, like say right here. Make this piece come up over as one and, and stop here and put a seam line here. That would have been better because then it's on the inside of the fuselage and you're not really going to see it much. You just kind of hide it. That would have been better. Also, a huge pin mark depth here, and then this one sticks up. This one is indented. This one sticks up. Like, it's just nasty. Now, this one is going to be covered. There's going to be a piece that goes in here, right? And that should be coming up somewhere. Uh, right here. See this piece that goes in there, okay, and covers that up, but so 
the fact that this is raised might interfere. So all I gotta do is just burn that down so it's flush. Do the same with this one. Okay, so there we go. At least that's flush. You're not gonna see it, so I don't need to clean it. But these ones, I need to fill. Let that sit. Now I have to let this stuff harden before I even try. It's gonna shrink a little bit. This is Vallejo plastic putty. Okay, that's what this stuff is. Okay. I think I might fill in here with crazy glue. Because it's harder and sands better. It won't shrink. And so, therefore, it's just a better filler to fill that gap. Yeah, the putty works, but for actually filling gaps and stuff, and then when you want to sand it, crazy glue is just a little bit better. Some guys, you know, they make their sprue goo, stuff like that. I don't bother with that. I don't really feel the need for it. Okay. So that is going to be that. So those got to sit, they got to set, and so um, just about ready for a second coat on the intake. Yeah, we're ready for a second coat. are now efficiently white. I might do a third coat just to get it nice and a little bit whiter up in the front. Um, yeah, other than that I think that's good enough for them. Um, as for the top, this is good enough. Plenty good enough for the top. You're not really going to be looking in there anyway. So, especially not this far back. And at the any angle you're going to be looking at is going to be direct like this, and you're gonna see the back, but you're not really gonna see the top. So, it's good enough. And so, that's basically gonna be it for me. I have lots of filling to do on the nose of this guy. Lots of gaps. Well, it's not gaps, it's just they did not do a very good job 
at the seam line on the canopy of this thing. Not canopy. The f nose fuselage. It. I got a lot of that to do. So this is where I'm gonna finish it up for now. Um, that's gonna be it for me. Um, yeah, that's gonna be it for now. I have to let this stuff sit and I gotta let it set and harden up and then I got sanding to do and, but that's this has to wait really that's the bottom line for that. I've got to get this glued up, let that glue set, and then I've got to put some putty in there so that I can do some sanding and fill all this in and get that all nice and smooth and lined up. And on the bottom here too, there's a lot of work involved just in this nose area, and that's just the way it is. Um, so, the intakes, I'll put a third coat, give this a few more minutes to dry, good, and then I'll put a third coat on there put them together and that's it for them um, so this is where I'm gonna end it for today guys and uh, I want to thank you for watching and thanks for coming out and uh, if you're watching this on YouTube um, head on over to my twitch channel and uh, you check me out there and you guys are watching me on twitch you can head on over to my YouTube channel you can always use more followers on my YouTube and uh, yeah, watch other videos of other things that I've built, all that fun stuff. Um, with you speaking Spanish, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and put subtitles on my videos in Spanish. I'll try to add that uh, from now on in case you want to check those out. Um, what else? What else? You guys who are watching me on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. There's 81% of you guys who watch me are not subscribed. Why not hit that subscribe button? Just do it. It doesn't hurt. Just do it. Just do it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for coming out. That's going to be it for me today. And, uh, yeah. So, I guess we will We'll see you all on the next one.